Hey, what's up, everybody? This is session number 10 of uh, The Art at Home. And today we have Character Day. And as you can see, my character is an AR emoji. So um, I really couldn't find anything else except for this, but um, I thought this would be kind of fun. So you can see me, uh, but not really me, using digital media to create a costume for myself. I know I'm supposed to be dressed like this all day, but I figured just for this shot alone would be good enough, um, at least for this uh, video. And it takes me a, almost all day to do the video anyway, so. Anyway, long story short, we're gonna get started with our um, session number 10. And we're, what we're gonna do is we are gonna be combining the information that we used from the past couple of classes to create today's uh, project, all right? So we're gonna need a lot of material, a lot of supplies today. And if you guys work with any of the popsicle stick um, uh, projects, then hopefully you have a lot more popsicle sticks lying around because you might have a whole bag of, of popsicle sticks from a craft store, from, uh, from a regular store that has those. Or maybe you guys have a lot of desserts inside the uh, freezer to um, use those popsicle sticks from. But anyway, uh, this is going to be our supply list. So here we go. We're going to be needing our glue. We're gonna need popsicle sticks. Got a bunch right here in a bag. Um, we're gonna need our pliers to help us to break down our popsicle sticks. Uh, we're gonna need scissors. We're also gonna need a pencil. We're gonna need a marker. And, well, actually, the marker is optional. We're also gonna need an eraser in case we make our mistakes. And we're gonna need a cardboard box. One large enough for this project. Now, it depends on how big you want to get with your project. Um, that's what's going to be, or maybe you only have like a certain size box at home that you want to use. Well, I guess that might limit how big your project is going to be. But anyway, you're gonna need a cardboard box regardless. Um, I do have a large cardboard box from my nephew. He uh, opened up um, a Nerf gun. And I actually took all the little stickers out. Uh, I was able to open it up. And I have this huge uh, canvas I can work with here. All this space I can work with. So I'm actually going to show you guys what to do using this box here. And if you have a small box like the one I have here, then you should be able to do it. But um, basically what the idea is, when you get your box, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna break it down so it's nice and flat, which means that you're gonna peel um, this piece of uh, glue apart from the cardboard box. You're also gonna go ahead and cut the tape that's sealing it so that you can open up the flap and just kind of splay everything out so it's nice and flat. But what, what we really want is we want a flat surface to work with because we're going to make um, a maze all right but this is going to be a more of a three-dimensional maze and um, if you have a shoe box a shoe box would work really well because then you won't have to alter it in any way because the top of the lid the shoe box lid is what you can use the inside of the lid where it has the uh, flap sticking up but um, if you don't have a shoe box uh, lid then let me show you what we can do with our other box okay so what I'm gonna do is just move my supplies off to the side what I need now is my scissors what I need also is a cardboard box there's a couple pieces of tape I missed on this thing so let me just snip those snippy snippy all right so now I have this flattened box like that and what I can do is I'm thinking I'm going to use this center area here and I want to make a shoebox lid so I want to keep the edges here um, I'm not gonna make it too high I'm gonna maybe maybe give it about an inch lid there so I'm gonna cut this flap and this flap off here so these two I'm gonna cut all right so bear with me okay so that's a little bit more manageable you can save these pieces too if you want to make a different project if you have excess but if you're using your box and 
Uh, I'm going to leave timestamps so that you guys can go ahead and fast forward through most of this stuff that you don't need to worry about. Alright, I now have something a little bit more manageable that I can use. Uh, this sort of fits in frame. I have an inch flap here from part of the box. I have an inch flap here that I cut from part of the part of the fart, part of the flap that I uh, that I had sticking out. I also cut cut off these things because I don't know if I want it actually this long, um, but I can I can use it. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is to make the the lip on the outside here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in about an inch on both sides here. Okay? Oh, this might be interesting. So, if I can get it into frame, I'm just gonna cut about an inch. And what's interesting is this box already has a tear in the flap used for um, selling their product. So this is a way longer flap than I need. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use this side and cut down approximately an inch, inch and a half. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it right on top of my cut. See that? This is making a little, a small little, um, what do you call it? Like a flap. Okay, I'm going to do that to both sides. I'm just going to kind of fold them in approximately there. And then I'm going to take this bottom part and I'm going to fold it up right there. And I'm gonna use these two flaps to fold in like a soda box. And you guys could use a soda box too. Those are kind of large though. Unless you have a really small soda box, you could use those too. But you see the way I folded it in like that? Now I can put glue on the flaps, stick it here, and that'll go ahead and seal up so that I'm gonna make my, um, my make pretend shoe box. That's what I wanna do, that's why. I'm trying to make a shoe box, uh, the lid anyway. All right, so I'm gonna grab my glue I'm gonna put glue here and here, and then I'm gonna fold the box over like this, and that's gonna go ahead and dry, okay? So let's open up our glue, tack a little here, tack a little there. Close it up so it doesn't dry. Then I'm gonna help myself with some tape so that I can use it as a grip or a um, clamp so I can keep my pieces together okay so that's gonna act as a little clamp there the idea is not to use the tape to seal the glue and the cardboard box together the idea is to use it to hold so it has a chance to to set so I'm gonna put a couple more pieces to strengthen it because this box is pretty strong it's trying to go back into its original shape which is laid out so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on the outside here and one more on the outside here just so they have some backup like that there we go see that okay so I'm gonna do the same thing on this side I'm gonna cut an inch in, and then I'm gonna go glue and tape it, so we're just gonna go ahead and magically do that quickly. So that's it for that. We are all done with the scissors, so we can put our scissors away. The only reason we needed it was to cut down our cardboard box so that we could create what looks like a uh, shoebox lid and we've accomplished that um, if you uh, already have your shoebox lid you should be at this point if you have one of them small soda can boxes or soup boxes uh, that's pretty much basically all you need and now we're gonna move on to using our pencil where did I put my pencil pencil and our eraser and we're gonna need maybe one or two popsicle sticks 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a maze like what we did uh, yesterday. And, but we're also going to use our popsicle sticks with what we did the day before. Okay, so we're doing another popsicle stick craft, all right? My box is pretty flat, which is great. And when these dry, this will be nice and strong. It'll stay standing, all right? But what I want to do is I am going to use my popsicle stick to kind of get um, an idea of how long they are. I, I know I can break these down. But sometimes I may not want to um, cut them. Sometimes it might be easier for me to draw a maze uh, without actually having to break any of these sticks because um, the idea today is we are going to make a maze and I'm going to draw a maze inside the box, right? So it's, uh, we'll just use one stick for now. So basically I'm going to create a starting point, all right? So I'm going to use this stick here to draw a starting point. All right, so there's my line. And what I can do is using my stick as a straight edge, I can create my maze. Okay, so right here now we have the maze moving to the right and down. And what I can do is I can do a split here. And the maze that you create is going to be totally up to you on how you want to do it. Okay, so right there we have a split, which means that a person can either go left or right. I am going to make another, another lane that way. And then I'm going to make a turn here. And then I can make it come back this way. So ultimately, all you want to do is you want to create a maze inside the box. That's it. Okay. So you guys can watch me finish up doing my maze. And this will help you guys um, get some ideas of how you want to do it. Okay, so I finished drawing in my maze. Um, as you can see, I have a bunch of different um, like branches and whatnot. And the idea for my maze, what I'm doing, is um, it's going to be kind of like a relay. So I'm going to put either pictures or numbers inside these big uh, squares here. And... Um, I am going to put a finish line here at the bottom right. So my start point is here, my finish point is here. But the reason why I put these squares is because I'm going to want the uh, the person who's playing to run the maze and get into these pockets. One, two, three. Four. and then like okay so I'm gonna have them go to different places and after they've hit each each spot without fail they're gonna end up trying to get to the end without um, getting into a trap and now traps what I mean by traps is I put up some uh, some difficult spots and I'm gonna put like 
either a skull and crossbones or I can put um, fail or I can put go to jail or draw jail or something like that to tell you that you failed in your attempt to do the relay all right so now you're probably wondering well why would I need to put fail spots I mean aren't people gonna see it while they're drawing their picture well here's the thing they're not going to be using a pencil or a pen to do the maze in this three-dimensional maze what we're gonna be using is we're gonna be using a small ball either a marble or some kind of a rubber ball and the player is going to hold the maze and they're gonna tilt and turn the maze to cause the ball to go into these different um, areas and if they end up having no control and the ball ends up inside say one of the jail pictures if I draw a jail picture or a fail word or skull and crossbones that tells them that they lost they failed and they have to start again from the beginning if they want to play again okay so this is something more called like a labyrinth rather than just a simple uh, pencil maze we're gonna be using uh, marble or some kind of rubber ball to roll in here now you're wondering well how am I supposed to keep the rubber ball from going through the lines just cutting through the lines by themselves well that's where the popsicle sticks come in okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place glue on the side of the popsicle stick and then we're gonna go ahead and stick it right on top of the mark that we just drew and it's going to create these this this trail this gutter that the ball can roll through all right so we're making a three-dimensional maze using our popsicle sticks all right so um, these small lines here it's very easy because of this line here this starting point it's as long as this popsicle stick so I'm just gonna glue that popsicle stick straight onto the map but when you come to these small lines here what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up a popsicle stick you're gonna take your pencil and you're gonna mark how much popsicle stick you're gonna need for that one small edge all right all over the board you're gonna be putting these oh look at this this line here is exactly up to this brown stain there and then I'm gonna try and find another place to put the oh here this is perfect so I have this one stick I'm cutting here to put here I'm using this middle piece for here and this back end piece is going to be this line here so in order to separate my pieces once again we're going to use our trusty pliers we're going to grip the, the pliers over the wood pinch it right on the line where we want to cut you see that that's where I want to cut it I pinch it down I bend up bend back and separate it if you need to rub uh, this part with some sandpaper or with a file or on top of the cement outside that'd be fine okay so that is my my first stick here and I'm gonna go ahead and break the second one using my pliers by pinching bending up bending down and using this piece here so I'm just gonna lay them down for now just so I know what pieces I have and you're gonna go through the entire thing like that you're gonna try and use up as many popsicles well, hopefully, hopefully you have enough popsicle sticks but you're gonna go through this entire maze and you're gonna be covering up all these different spots here and when it's time to glue them down so don't glue them while you're breaking them break all the pieces first line them up next to the side where you're gonna glue them all right that way you don't lose track so make sure that you're working someplace where a little sister or little brother can't bang your maze and cause it to like shift and every all the pieces just go flying everywhere once you guys are done putting it all together it's going to be a three-dimensional maze and you can use a ball to put it all together so I'm just gonna go ahead and use some some of my magic to finish this bad boy up okay so wait, let me just put that in the, in the middle all right so alakazam alakazoo make this maze a dream come true all right so here we have it all of my pieces are now glued in to my maze and as you can see 
it's three dimensional because all of my popsicle sticks are standing up all right uh, I went ahead and I also added goals and fails so the traps and like I said before you can put multiple goals inside your uh, your maze so you can have like say this was goal one this is goal two this is goal three and four and so forth and say you start from the beginning and you tell the person who's playing alright I want you to start by going to goal number four which is here and then I want you to go to goal number one come back to goal number three and then go to goal number two you know so you can tell them to uh, go and go to the goals um, in in a non uh, specific manner so that it keeps the game fresh and then you can um, uh, what do you call it uh, keep it interesting you don't even have to include certain goals if you don't want to um, you can also make it so that the fails are the goals oh hit all the fails don't hit don't hit any other goals hit all the fails and make it to the finish line and you win okay so um, you can keep changing the rules so that it's interesting for the person who's playing and it also gives replayability to your um, your your maze here you don't want to just play one time through and all that work that you just did is like okay so what then so I made multiple goals and each goal is represented by kind of like bigger squares bigger areas now for you that are um, writing it down um, it, you don't have to write the word goal you can also write things like A B C you can put letters and instead of putting fail you can put things like um, miss or you can put lose turn or you can put uh, like I said before drawings like a skull and crossbones to show that they they fell in a trap and they're dead or you can do goals instead of writing goal you can put like different fruits like you want to put a banana an apple pineapple um, a strawberry and then you say okay I want you to get to the strawberry first and the blueberry then the uh, lemon okay those are all the different types of things you can do now besides putting fails and now I strategically placed my fails so like um so say for example this fail here you see that if a person is coming down to come to this goal here when they're trying to make it back out it's possible that they could go too fast and their ball can end up slipping into the fail the trap which means they have to start all over again okay so i put a i strategically placed these traps so when people are being a little bit careless or their ball is moving too fast they end up going into the fails and they have to start all over all right, so you got to be very, very careful when you go through my maze. Um, the maze, the the fails are much easier to get into than the goals are. Like here, I have a fail here, and I have a fail there, and you have to get your ball to go right into the center of both of these things. And then I also, not only did I write the word fail here, I also drew a fuzzy little line, kind of like a little electrocution mark, like they got shocked. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put that as my fail marker, where these lines touch the, the maze wall that's telling you as soon as your ball touches that line or goes inside that hole that's it they fail okay so I even have another fail down here this one has no border notice how this one has a border with these sticks and then it has one entryway this one has a border with these sticks in the wall of the um, the box and it has one entryway to the fail well this one they have to when they're when they're playing this game they have to gently roll the ball through this door and keep it up against this wall and drive it all the way down to the finish line because this is like the winning stretch here this is this is the winning stretch and if the ball rolls at all into the fail line they have to start all over from the beginning so imagine somebody having to go to each goal one i have one two three four five six seven eight nine i have ten goals inside this whole labyrinth and imagine everybody or a person going to each goal finally getting to number 10 and accidentally hitting the fail buzzer right over here and having to start all over again that would be awesome okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my sharpie to outline the words that I wrote here so it stands out more if you have pens like uh, I have red and green you can also color behind the fails or behind the goals to make them stand out so that's where you know you have to get your your ball if you want you can even draw like speed arrows going down the corridors 
um, you can add more traps and by adding more traps I mean like dry glue you know how when you put a drop of glue and it hardens and it has a little bump to it well since it's a ball rolling on top of this uh, this little container here if you put little dots or drips of glue along the um, path like I'm gonna put glue here on this path so when the ball rolls down it's gonna like boom 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 it's gonna go up and down the humps of those uh, those droplets of glue that are dried and it's gonna make it kinda like the ball go a little bit crazy but it's kinda adds some some interesting uh, movement to your to your labyrinth or your maze so I'm gonna go ahead and add my key uh, embellishments as well as my details to my um, maze and I'm gonna come right back to show you my finished product okay all right here we go more magic ooh alakazam alakazibi help me to make this so wonderful thingy that doesn't rhyme all right so I think I've actually gussied it up as much as I care to um, yeah, so I've, I've kind of like made my opening line here look like a little, uh, like a raceway. And then um, towards the end, I copied that same kind of thing because this is the uh, home stretch here. So I kind of copied that same kind of thing. Um, these are the roads that are not going to be used except for uh, ingress and egress. So those are cool. I decided to label some of my areas, just kind of uh, make it interesting so the board isn't boring on the ground uh, you guys can actually color the streets if you want to I mean that's fine but I did color my uh, fails and my goals and I went ahead and I labeled my goals instead of numbering them so I go I got A through J um, labeled from my goals and I created this little dotted line here kinda like a reminiscent of the checkerboard to tell us that this is a goal to get to our finish line and um, on top of the fails I kinda made these scratchy uh, very off-putting kind of lines so that you avoid those areas now I think the last bit of um, uh, detail or uh, whatnot that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some glue and I'm gonna put little spots especially here on bump lane uh, bump lane is gonna get a bunch of little dots here and there of glue and once that hardens it's gonna create this kind of texture inside the um, map so that when the ball rolls through this area, it's going to kind of be jostled around by these invisible bumps. Because by the time it dries, like if you look over here on this side of the board, these, um, these popsicle sticks are already pretty dry. And there was quite a bit of glue used. And you can't even tell that there was glue here. However, on this side, the glue is still a little wet. So you can see some small bits of, of white spots here and there. So um, that's not really finished yet. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of finish up with those uh, last bits of glue to create a little bit more um, excitement for the person who's actually playing with the board. And um, yeah, other than that, my, my board is pretty much completed. All right, so we're going to need ourselves a little ball. I have a marble here. We have ourselves our little uh, labyrinth here. I'm going to put the marble in the start position and we're gonna try and get around our board we're gonna go to A B C D E F G H I J and then we're gonna go ahead to the finish let's try and see if we can do this um, yeah
Whoa. Whoa. So close to finishing, but you know I'm gonna try and try and see what's gonna happen if I go from J to the end. See if I can make it. Mm. On the side now, and finish. Ah, oh, boy. Oh well, that's it. That's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this project. Alright gang, so that's it for session number 10, Art at Home. I hope you guys had fun, and I hope you guys can uh, create some very interesting looking mazes. Uh, go ahead and take pictures if you want, send them to the uh, email, my email, and then I can put them up on the Art at Home uh, Schoolworks, uh, student, student Project Works, up on the webpage. Alright, so have a wonderful day, and I'll see you tomorrow.